Hey guys, Stan here from Rocky Creek. Welcome back to the homestead. It's been uh, pretty, pretty busy times around here. Uh, a lot of it though has been more family and work related. Uh, I've been working some overtime quite a bit here lately. Mrs. Rocky Creek is back into the meat of her school year as a teacher. And you know, with the start of the year, you get back to school nights, kids getting acclimated, our own kids getting acclimated back into school. Um, and then I've worked quite a bit of overtime here lately as there's been some events in our city. And so things have been pretty busy, uh, but we have been able to get in some work around here. And we've also been able to have some fun amongst all the mitts. Just uh, the other day, we went about an hour to an hour and 15 drive to a county ag fair where the kids got to ride rides. We got to see animals. They had a milking demonstration, um, a logging demonstration, a tractor pull, you know, all kinds of stuff like that, but you gotta find time to balance it. But today we have taken care of all the animals. Earlier today, I worked on some of my honeydew list, which was to get the back deck pressure washed. And then I will get that resealed here in the next couple days with some water sealer uh, just to preserve it. But the big focus of today is if you've been following us on our social media through Facebook or Instagram, you saw where a couple weeks ago we got another batch of meat birds in. Uh, we have also gotten some egg layers in here recently and all of them have been brooding in our shed. Temperatures are abnormally warm right now. Uh, we're gonna get highs close to 90 throughout the rest of the week. And I've been turning the heat lamp off during the day and only cutting it on at night when it's been getting low. Uh, but actually last night, I forgot to cut the heat lamp back on up until about midnight and the chickens seem to be doing pretty good. So I've made a decision that I'm gonna move these guys outside. The egg layers will go into the coop with the big chickens inside of a separate cage and I'll show you that. But our meat birds will be going into our chicken tractor again, contained within our electric poultry netting. And I'm actually gonna be running them in an area that I've never run any animals before. Uh, recently with our last batch, you know we did it here in this area where I wanted to get a lot of these weeds uh, worn down, which the meat birds did a great job with that. They got it worn down. We got a base layer of some fertilizer here. And this is pretty good as we head into the fall. But there's an area of the property that I eventually want to grow some stuff on. And so I'm gonna move them there but I'm gonna have to be relying upon my poultry netting and trusting that it's gonna do its job to keep predators away because it's gonna be pretty far away from the house. So let me get this out of here. Let me get it to where it needs to go. Let's get our poultry netting up and then we'll show you where the meat birds are right now in this, getting them set up on grass and how we do that. So let's go. So guys, way over yonder there, where Madison is, that's the driveway to the front of our home. And you got a couple of our fruit trees. And then it brings you down into this clearing right here, goes up the hill. And I got this big clear area. And actually, you can't see it because of the weeds growing, but just on the other side of that tall grasses is gonna be where our pigs are. But this is a, a grassy field area that, you know, I mow it regularly. And somewhere way down the road, we have always planned to either do a really nice cooney cooney set up here, you know, when we have a lot of extra money, can invest and pretty much do something that's perfect, exactly how we want it from the beginning versus what we've pieced together at a reasonable cost for now. Or down the road, if we ever decided to raise any goats, this was an area we were gonna run the goats. That's gonna be a ways down the road. You know, we got a lot of stuff going on right now, but the grass has grown really good here. I don't know how rocky the soil is. Everywhere else around here seems like it is, but the grass does grow really well here. And what I've decided to do is I'm gonna run the chickens here in this flat grassy area with their electric netting, like I said, and hopefully 
no predators will get to them. My only concern with down here is that it is a bit away from the house. As you can see, there's a lot of overgrowth. Predators and other animals like that because they can hide in there pretty good. But hopefully the electric netting will work. And realistically, I only need to buy about six weeks of time. So I'm hoping down here will, will work out just fine. We'll see, but I want them to fertilize and to kind of rough up this ground a little bit because I would like to plant some kind of crops here next year and or a flower garden or something and utilize this area. So I want to start prepping that just as when I ran my chickens over where our current garden is when we very first moved here. So this is where it's at. Let me get the electrical netting, run that, get the energizer hooked up, and then we'll get the birds over here. This netting works great, but man, do I hate untangling it when I haven't used it in a while. I'm not looking forward to that when we get it over there. So as I've gotten some of it unraveled, I'm able to find one of the ends. And one thing I do know is that I want one of my ends to be over towards this corner where it has the connector where it's best to hook the energizer to. And I want it over here because you may be able to see it in the picture, but the shade is starting over there. And so I get the majority of my sunlight to this side. So I want my energizer to be right here where I know there's gonna be an increased amount of sun, but it's also towards where I can walk to them. And this is where we find out moment of truth about the ground. It's pretty hard, not gonna lie. Pretty darn hard. All right guys, we got it all done. Got the white tarp on top just to give them some extra shade and also helps keep a little bit of rain off of them. We got the water in there. Um, I'm not gonna hang a feeder in there right now. We'll still give them their little feeder for right now. And then we've got the electrical netting running all around. So they're gonna have plenty of space to be able to run around and do what they wanna do. We'll start them out closed up inside of this coop for about the first two to three days. And then after that, we'll start letting them out. And then as we notice that that part of the house is getting a bit too worn down, then we'll start moving the house around and their feed will not stay inside of there. Their feed will eventually get brought out, you know, about 10, 12 feet. So they'll have to go back and forth and it forces them to use their legs. But of course, the ones we get from Myers Poultry, they're pretty energetic as it is for Cornish Cross. So we don't expect too many issues. But now let's go ahead and grab these guys and let's get them in here on the grass. All right, guys, so you can see them in there. They've pretty much maxed out this brooder. It's time to get them out. So we're going to try to utilize these two old boxes I got. And we're going to try to round them up in there and take them down in one swoop. Thank you. 
right, we got them all right here. They're super cramped up, but it's a short ride, so let's get them where they need to go. So that right there is how a chicken is supposed to live and how it should be raised. Um, you know, out here, fresh air, grass, open air, and they're not, of course, free ranging quite yet because they're going to be stuck in here for a couple days, but that's really just for their own protection and to make sure that they know this is where they're at. Now the temperatures are supposed to get down into, I believe, the 60s tonight, but I think they're going to be okay. This could be, you know, could be a big risk and we could be in for an issue, but I think they're gonna be fine tonight. I don't normally feed them in the afternoon. I usually just feed them once a day, but I went ahead and uh, fed them this afternoon because as a chicken's body digests food, it, it produces uh, natural body heat. And so I'm hoping that by them filling up their bellies tonight and huddling together, that that should help increase their warmth that they have. This area that we're at too is also kind of like in a bowl. And so I'm hoping that if there's any breeze or wind that they'll probably be sheltered uh, from any of that as well. But they're not calling for any rain at all um, here for about the next week. And temperatures during the day are gonna get up pretty high. Um, like I said, up into the 90s. So I think they're gonna be okay, but we're gonna be fingers crossed that they'll be all right. And hopefully fingers crossed that the electrified netting will keep any predators away. If you've been with us before, you know we lost an entire batch of birds inside of this coop here where something dug underneath it and got to them and took all but one in only one night. Uh, but that was before we had the electrified netting around them. Our last set of birds were raised same way with the netting and we had zero problems with predators. So we're gonna hope that that's gonna be the same case here. But yeah, we're gonna let these guys settle in Let's go over here and make sure this thing's actually popping hot like it should before we leave these guys out here for the night. All right, so it's only hitting at 4,000, which I don't like. So let's double check around and make sure that there's not somewhere that's causing that to happen. Well, now that's up to six. That's good. I'm just trying to double check my fence, buddy. Okay, see ya. So I went around all the fencing and one big culprit I see a lot of times with this fencing that grounds it out is the bottom rung will slide down and touch one of the metal pegs and I don't see that going on right now. So my guess is going to be that just because we haven't had any rain for quite some time is that, you know, there's just not a lot of moisture in the ground. So the conductivity from the ground rod is probably pretty limited right now and I think that's probably our issue. But You know, 6,000, I'll take it. But I've had this thing read eight before, so I'm gonna think it just has to do with the dryness of the ground right now. Well guys, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to admit that I lied to you. I said we were gonna get the egg layers moved today, and it's just not gonna happen. Uh, time got away from me today. It took a lot longer to get these guys set up than what I had anticipated uh, between the hardness of the ground and just having to take care of some other logistics throughout the day. Because believe it or not, in between some of this recording, there's been some grocery shopping happening some other chores here around the house, getting the kids ready for 
school next week and you know that's just the life of a family and so we just ran out of time and we're going to get inside we're going to eat some dinner we got some good barbecue shredded chicken breasts uh, that we're going to have on some sandwiches that were raised here and along with some probably oven roasted potatoes and some corn or something like that so where well, i'm going to have dinner with the family we're not going to get the egg layers moved we'll get that done here very soon so i apologize that we didn't get to that today but that's just the way it goes sometimes in real life uh, but we'll get that done here real soon and we'll show you how we're going to set those guys up but right now my big focus for these guys because 21 birds smells a lot worse in a brooder than six birds so i want to get them out first they're my priority uh, so guys we appreciate you hanging out we hope everybody's been doing great and we hope you all will be with us soon when we're back with you with our next episode so thanks guys we'll see you soon bye guys